Good morning, and welcome back to the second ever episode of Saturday Morning Switch, brought to you by Retro Remastered. While everyone in their wolf, hat, and talking boat is going to be picking up the new Zelda come launch day, when it comes to the rest of the Switch's lineup, there's a lot more uncertainty. So, in these next few episodes, we're going to focus on those games. Next week will be Super Bomb Man R, but this week it's all about 1 2 Switch. The easiest comparison is that of Wii Sports, Nintendo Land, and VR Worlds. Just like those were games that simply and effectively showcased what the related systems could achieve, so too does 1 2 Switch with the Joy Cons and the various tech, like the much touted HD Rumble. We currently know of 8 of the mini games that comprise 1 2 Switch, thanks to hands on events of last week. Some of them seem fairly standard and not really beyond anything that the Wii offered, such as Safe Crack, where you twist and turn your Joy Con, trying to line it up a certain way based off Rumble feedback to Crack is safe. There's also Copy Dance, a neat enough idea where one player strikes a pose and the other tries to match them as accurately as possible, which would be fine if Just Dance wasn't part of the Switch's launch lineup. Table Tennis uses audio feedback to encourage players to whack an imaginary ping pong ball back and forth, but again, Wii Sports Tennis feels like it already accomplished this and much more. And then there's Milk. There's not really any way to avoid the obvious here. You move the Joy-Con up and down while pressing and releasing the button in a rhythmic manner to milk an imaginary tea. Some people will find it hilarious, but others will no doubt feel a little uneasy about that idea. Happily, the remaining four games we know of all offer more inventive and interesting uses of the tech. Quick Draw might just be a Wild West showdown that we've all done in our childhood, but 1-2-Switch amps it up to another level, with players having to raise and shoot on command, and ensuring that they don't fire too early or too late while staring at your opponent. It offers a genuine competitiveness that the other games kind of lack. Having the console replay your motions afterwards and show just a few milliseconds separated the two of you is a thrill as well that aids the whole experience. Another game asking you to eyeball your foe is Samurai Training. In this one, players swing their Joy-Con down to mimic a sword strike and the other has to clap their hands together to catch it. The game continues until someone gets struck, but the sensitivity of the controllers allow players to fake each other out, adding a level of mind games to the proceedings that really helps the immersion. Eating Contest is another unusual one, using the IR motion camera in the right Joy-Con to detect your mouth, at which point you have to chop like mad and eat your way through virtual sandwiches. Considering only one of the Joy-Cons has the tech needed for this game though, this potentially hints at games where players take it in turns, instead of the immediate head-to-head -head action of the rest. And then there's perhaps the game that has excited people the most, despite how mundane it sounds. Ball Count asks you to tilt your controller around and work out how many marbles are stuck in there. This is achieved by the HD Rumble working overtime, providing a realistic sense of them rolling to and fro and clicking into each other. This is something you simply couldn't play anywhere else on any current gaming tech, and hopefully inspires others to fully utilise the HD Rumble's capabilities. As for the rest of the lineup, outside of vague guesses from what the reveal trailer showcased, it's anyone's guess. I've seen some people estimate 20 minigames total, but Nintendo are keeping shtum at the moment. Which would be fine if this was a packing game or even a title to help sell Nintendo's new paid online service a la PS Plus and games with gold. But it's not. It's £40. And unless there's a lot more to this game than we currently know, the sad truth is that it's not worth that price point, unless you're planning to travel the world demoing the system to everyone you meet. It is, certainly, an interesting prospect that can sell the multiplayer capabilities of the Switch, offering an experience what players are looking at and trying to read each other instead of eyeballing the television is something very rarely seen in gaming and offers a veneer of legitimacy to the contests. But everyone who's played the minigames on offer agrees that after a few minutes, the novelty does wear off. It feels very much like a warm-up to the system, like Wii Party was back in the day, but nothing you'll keep in your system for more than a day or two. Maybe, as we get closer, Nintendo will open up a little more and showcase where some of 1-2-Switch's replayability is to be found. But for now, if you want long-term multiplayer action on day one of the Switch, well, come back next week and we'll talk about it in the form of Super Bomberman R. Thanks for watching this episode, and as an aside, yes, I'm excited for the new Fire Emblem games as well. Especially Fire Emblem Heroes, which will hopefully justify my purchase of a new Nintendo 3DS. If you feel like it, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, or comment and tell us what you think. And if you want more Switch talk, why not listen to the most recent episode of the Party Chat Podcast. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.